Teachers, what's the saddest thing you've learned about a student? I'm a preschool teacher, but this breaks my heart. At my first preschool in 2013, there was this little boy that none of the other teachers could really handle. He was about two, and he was in my very first ever class. The child was always high strung, full of energy and running around. We attributed this to him lacking stability in his life, bouncing around from him living with his aunt and uncle, then grandparents, then dad. Mom wasn't in the picture, we were told she was arrested for drugs. And then one day he disappeared. Was just gone. My director called his aunt weekly for a month, before just taking him off the roster. I was devastated. Well, six months later he comes back, and is a completely different child. Dark circles under his eyes, quiet. He didn't even seem to remember me. On his first day back he accidentally knocked a little girl down while running, and when she started crying he became petrified. He sat under a table and stared at me without moving at all. I asked his aunt about it that night, and she told me the reason he disappeared is because his mother came home and got custody. They hadn't seen him in almost as long as I had. She had seemed to be doing okay until a neighbor had called the cops for suspected domestic abuse, and when they arrived she was in the kitchen with a knife threatening to kill this little boy. I don't think I go a day without remembering this. Just want to say a thank you to the teachers on this thread. You guys are seriously amazing and I wish that my teachers had realized what had been happening at home to me, my brother and sister. Don't ever give up on this you are all amazing. I don't even know what happened to you, and I already feel bad for you. Thanks I would have given a lot for a teacher to have realized the abuse my dad was putting us through. One of my elementary students last year lost her dad to a drug overdose. Since her mother was actively using, they gave custody of the girl to her 20-something sister. Mom went into a program, hoping to get clean so she could regain custody. The mom overdosed this year on the anniversary of the father's death and died the day after. My heart breaks for this little girl when she's old enough to put all of that together. My dad's closest group of friends had something similar happen. One of them overdosed on Oxycontin a few years back, so they all got clean because it scared the shit out of them. And what do you know? A year later all except my dad did Oxy in remembrance and without the tolerance they had prior. All overdosed. Heartbreaking but, but damn such a dumb fucking idea. I had a third grade student who was always sleeping in class. At first I brushed it off because he was out for a couple days before this started for being sick. After the first week, I asked him what was going on. He said he didn't like his bed. I asked why. He said there was blood on it from when saw his mom's ex-boyfriend came over and gave her a hopin on it. He laughed embarrassingly and said she was naked. It was then I realized his mom was probably raped and beaten on her son's bed while he watched. After calling CPS, mandated reporter, I went to a local mattress shop and said I needed a mattress for one of my students who was in need. I kept it vodge, but stated that I wanted him to sleep better at home to help him in school. The guy was so sweet and didn't pry and ended up getting the store to donate it with no proof of who arranged it. It just showed up at my student's home a brand new mattress not tainted with a real-life nightmare. He never mentioned it in class, but I did notice quickly that he was getting the rest he needed. That was several years ago, and I just hope him and his mom are okay. One of the many heartbreaking tales of this title I school teacher. Edit, if you'd like to spread some educational joy this holiday season, please consider sponsoring a project for classrooms in need at donorschoose.org. There are even gift card options, if you're looking for last-minute gift ideas. Thank you all so much for the kind words. One of my kids lived with his grandparents. His mom and little sister were both shot at a convenience store. During a robbery I take it? If someone is shot during a robbery, then fuck, that's terrible, and the murderer should be fucking locked away for a longest time. If you shoot a little girl during a robbery? Then fuck you, 
You're a pussy ass bitch who deserves to have his feet skinned and forced to walk the Sahara with nothing but a bottle of salt water. Little different story, I had a guitar student who played the biggest pile of junk guitar ever made. This was one of those student classical guitars they handed out to school kids in the 70s. He refused to get another one. The action, string height from fingerboard, was about an inch at the lowest, and the top was collapsing, making it virtually unplayable in its current form. I tried multiple times to set it up or alter it so it would play better, but he wouldn't let anything be changed about it. He was very protective of this guitar. Thinking he was just poor and couldn't afford a new guitar, I tried to show him the cheapest new or even used guitars that would be so much better to practice with. He wasn't interested in any other guitar. I even offered to give him a guitar free. Anything would be better than this unplayable piece of rotting wood he was banging on. One day, after I am yet again begging him to try out this other guitar, he comes clean with me. He tells me when his mom died two years ago, she had that guitar sitting by her. She was trying to play guitar to take her mind of her illness as she was dying. Once had a student that was very disruptive. He would make any random noise just to get a rise out of teachers. The funny thing was, he would act very remorseful once he was redirected, but it was starting to get really annoying. He made friends with another teacher's grandson and would hang out at her house on occasion. It became almost daily. The teacher became close with him and it was revealed that he and his brother are emotionally neglected by their father. His father had a new girlfriend and they had a baby. It turns out, his new girlfriend didn't care for his kids and wanted him to focus on his new family. Dad was eager to please so he essentially banned the kids from being around them. Poor kid just wanted someone to pay attention to him. When I started teaching first grade two years ago, I had a student who developed a brain tumor towards the end of the year. Seeing him change from being happy and upbeat to quiet and introverted after his diagnosis was heartbreaking. He's now in third grade and although he's still having chemotherapy he's carrying on with school, doing the best he can and not letting his treatment get him down. I admire his spirit and determination. I had a student in second grade with brain cancer. Tough little girl, and she pulled through, but god that was a tough year for all of us. In a freshman class, I had a student who came to the US as a child as a refuge. I was talking to her after class, and she told me all of her family except her father had escaped at the same time. What about your father? I asked. The rebels caught him and ate him, she answered. I had no idea what to say to that. Was she from Liberia? In the 90s I spent several months in Somalia and told my great uncle who ran the charity, I want to see Liberia on the way back before going to Morocco to get a flight home because I wanted to see the US's old colony. He said we couldn't because there was no government and a bad civil war. I replied well same here as there was literally genocide going on. He said, verbatim, uh no. It's so much more horrific. They are ritualistically committing cannibalism, and that's just scratching the surface. I'm not entirely sure what it means, but I run a little after-school program for elementary school kids on improv. Though since they're so young, usually first to third grade, we really just play theater games and loose make-believe, but they seem to enjoy it. This one eight-year-old, Will Colin Chester, has very alarming reactions to what he perceives as failure. Multiple times a class I'll blanketly say okay everyone please stop talking and listen and Chester will be on the verge of in tears every time and cry but I wasn't even talking. As if I had been staring him in the eyes as I said it. Whether he was talking or not, he feels personally attacked it seems. Another time we were playing a game that involved them freezing in different poses and he'll lead them along and remind them to stay as still as possible. Out of nowhere, Chester storms off and sits in the corner, already in tears. I ask him what's wrong, and he blurts I failed. I couldn't stay still and I need to be punished it took about 5 minutes of explaining it's all part of the game, no one can stay still, no one fails anything in this class, to get him back with the rest of the group. Absolutely heartbreaking to have to argue with a child that he is not bad or wrong.